EVT, an automotive test equipment and repair service. Your place where you can make one call to repair it all. Compensating for runout with a PFM 9.2 is a very simple process. Once the machine is attached, all the technician needs to do is turn on the lathe and firmly press the start button. A series of clicking sounds will be heard as the lathe adjusts for runout. The lathe will adjust for a short time, usually less than a minute. After the adjustment is complete, the clicking will stop and the control panel of the lathe will light up with a status report, usually double green lights. The double green lights are an indication that runout has been compensated to less than one thousandths of an inch. If the lathe has trouble getting a clear signal of the runout, it will open up the acceptance range and keep trying. In this case, a single green light is given, indicating that runout has been reduced to less than three thousandths of an inch. If the red try again light appears, remove the lathe from the adapter, rotate the adapter 180 degrees, and try again. Often the PFM 9.2 will be able to adjust the second time. Repeated failure to zero would indicate a problem with vehicle components such as a damaged bearing or a bent half shaft. These components should be serviced before turning rotors on the car. This machine is ready to make a cut. Notice that you can still see some radial runout in the machine. This scrubbing motion is different from that of lateral runout which has been compensated for by the machine. This is caused by a slightly off-centered adapter and is desirable since it forces the lathe to leave a non-directional surface finish on the rotor, which in turn reduces the chance for any brake noise. Reviewing for lateral runout adjustment. Double green lights indicate it's okay to make a cut. If the lathe shows the red try again light, dismount it, rotate the adapter 180 degrees, and try again. Repeated try again lights usually indicate some problem with the hub or axle that will need to be corrected before machining the rotor. Making the cut is a simple operation. Loosen the clamp knob on top of the cutting head to allow the cutting arms to spread. Visually check to see that the arms are set wide enough to clear the rotor and advance the head to the middle of the braking surface using the feed knob. Advance the cutting arm on the back side of the rotor until it just skims the surface. Then advance the cutting arm on the front side of the rotor until it also just touches the surface. This will be the base from which cut depth will be set. Then use the feed knob and advance the head into the inner edge of the braking surface. It is absolutely critical that you do not advance the head too far and strike the hat of the rotor. Watch very carefully as you advance the head. Failure to do this will result in damage to the lathe. At the inner edge of the braking surface, use the advanced knobs to set cutting depth. Each line on the knob will advance the bit two and a half thousandths of an inch as marked. The PFM 9.2 can take up to 15 thousandths per side or 30 thousandths per rotor and still leave a finished cut surface. There is no need to make a secondary cut with the PFM 9.2, so cut depth should be set deep enough to ensure that all runout is taken in one pass. Once this is done, Tighten the clamp knob on top of the cutting head and mount the disc silencer. This silencer is very important and should be used on every rotor to prevent vibration. It rides right on top of the tips, as shown. To start the cutting pass, disengage the feed clutch by popping the feed knob. The cut will take two to four minutes, depending on the size of the rotor. And when the cut is finished, the automatic shutoff will stop the machine. To dismount the brake lathe, simply unscrew the main knob, being careful not to bump the rotor or fender with the brake lathe. To review making a cut, first make a scratch cut to establish baseline for depth of cut. Advance the cutting head to the inside edge of the rotor, being very careful that the cutting arms do not hit the hat. Hitting this hat will cause damage to the tool holder plate that will adversely affect lathe performance. Set cut depth so that all runout can be cut out of the rotor in one pass. Remember, the lathe can take up to 30 thousandths per pass.